Now that we have our subscription in place and all of the uses are ready to go, let's spend some time learning about Dynamics 365 instances. We'll start with an overview of the different Dynamics 365 instances. We'll learn how to manage and administer them. We will walk through a few key items to keep in mind when working with tenants. We'll learn how to manage storage and we'll wrap up the module by learning how to manage administrative email notifications which is a very important feature, especially when it comes to those times of the year when a new update of Dynamics 365 becomes available. Organizations typically leverage multiple instances when deploying Microsoft Dynamics 365. These instances are used for diverse purposes, such as development, user acceptance testing, and production. The reason why instances can be used for different purposes is because each instance has its own database and settings, which allows organizations to develop new functionality on a separate environment without modifying the functionality available to users inside the production instance. Having a separate database also means that the organization can upgrade them separately, which is always a best practice. We will cover upgrading later on this course. Since some of the instances can be used for development or testing, the data needed to accomplish these tasks doesn't always have to match all of the data stored inside of the production instance. This means that each instance can have its own data set stored on a separate database. As we move through this course, and as you work with Dynamics 365 online, it is important that you understand all of these terms and how they all work together. First, let's talk about tenants. A tenant is an account on Microsoft Online Services with its own billing details, licenses acquired, subscriptions, services available, and so on. This means that most organizations looking to deploy multiple services like Dynamics 365, Office 365, and Microsoft Flow, for example, only need one tenant or account. Having all of the services within the same tenant provides many advantages. For example, once a user authenticates to their Microsoft Online Services account, the user can access any of the services he or she has been licensed to use without the need to authenticate again for each service accessed. Also, when it comes to integrations between services, for example, the integration between Dynamics 365 and SharePoint Online or Exchange Online is a lot easier when all of these services are under the same umbrella or tenant. As a matter of fact, some of these are automatically pre-wired for the organization without them having to do some of the work needed to enable that integration. Typically, the organization just has to go in and perform a couple of steps to enable the seamless integration. It's awesome. One last thing about integration services within the same tenant, and I think this is a very important fact to keep in mind. Some of the functionality available in Dynamics 365 is sometimes only available when using online services. For example, the new Relationship Insights functionality introduced with Dynamics 365 requires Dynamics 365 and Exchange to be online and within the same tenant. Now, it is true that the vast majority of Dynamics 365 functionality works whether an organization is online or on-premise, but sometimes organizations decide to deploy Dynamics 365 after they see functionality that they know would create massive value for them. So always keep this in mind when it comes to discussing which platform to use. Depending on the organization and their business objectives, sometimes the decision whether to go online or on-premise is an easy one to make. I personally always lean towards recommending Dynamics 365 online as I believe there's a great value on focusing mostly on resolving business challenges instead of getting distracted with servers, networks, firewall, and all of those other things organizations worry about when deploying a new on-premise solution. Having said that, the next term we need to discuss is subscription. When an organization decides to enable access to a Microsoft Online solution, such as Office 365 or Dynamics 365, they start a subscription. Each subscription has its own conditions and license details. For example, an organization could start a subscription for Office 365 E3 for 700 licensed users and then a separate subscription for 400 Dynamics 365 Enterprise Plan 1 licenses. Each subscription will have its own expiration date and conditions, which means that if the organization ends one of the subscriptions, it doesn't mean that the others will be affected. Also, each subscription can have its own add-ons and services. For example, on a Microsoft Dynamics 365 subscription, a separate sandbox instance could be added to be used for development, testing, or something else.
Speaking of instances, as we discussed in the previous slide, an instance is a separate Dynamics 365 environment with its own database, dataset, customizations, and configuration. By default, all licensed users within the Dynamics 365 subscription can access all of the instances within that subscription. However, some organizations might not want all of the users to be able to access their development instance, for example. In order to accomplish this, organizations can assign security groups to an instance and filter which users will be synchronized to that particular instance. For example, an organization could create a developers group and assign that security group to the development instance. This will ensure that the developers can access the instance to work on it, but other users won't be able to access it. Here's a little graph to give you a better picture of how these different entities relate to one another. You can see the tenant at the top, representing the account an organization has with Microsoft Online Services. Within that tenant, we see two subscriptions, one for Office 365 and the other one for Dynamics 365. Inside the Dynamics 365 subscription, we find two instances. One is used for production and the other one is used for training. Each one of these instances could have its own security group to restrict access to a specific set of users. And of course, each instance has its own separate database. Within a Dynamics 365 subscription, there can be two types of instances. And as a matter of fact, each subscription receives one instance of each type. The two types of instances available are production instances and non-production instances, also known as sandbox instances. Non-production instances are used for non-production purposes, such as training users, developing new customizations, testing new solutions, and also to test whether existing customizations will work after an upgrade. It is recommended that organizations have at least three instances within their subscription. The production instance used for day-to-day -day access by the users, a development instance used to develop new functionality before eventually introducing the new functionality to the production environment, in a user acceptance testing sandbox instance. This instance is used to deploy newly created functionality to be tested and eventually approved by a small set of users to be moved into production. This instance is also typically used to train all of the users that will be leveraging the new functionality before it's finally moved into production. The good news is that the organization gets two out of the three minimum recommended instances included on their Dynamics 365 subscription. And an additional sandbox instance is inexpensive. It can be accessed by all of the users licensed within the subscription. Production and sandbox instances are purchased as add-ons to the Dynamics 365 subscription. It is important to note that add-ons cannot be purchased for trials, which means that organizations won't be able to try a full lifecycle management process on a trial before enabling a subscription. But once it's in place, the customer automatically gets access to the two instances included within their new Dynamics 365 subscription. In addition to the type of instance and security group, which we discussed a few minutes ago as a useful way to control which instances users are added to, each instance has its own name, unique URL, and even a way to describe what the purpose of the instance is for. These settings are set in the Office 365 Admin Center. In the Office 365 Admin Center, navigate to the Admin section and open the Dynamics 365 Admin Center. You will then see a list of instances available within the subscription. Select the desired instance and click on the Edit button to access the properties of the instance, which can be then updated if needed. Since sandbox instances are used for non-production purposes, such as development and training, organizations need to sometimes reset them or even create copies between them. These actions are not available to be performed on production instances, which is a good thing. You wouldn't want an admin to be able to delete or reset a production instance by accident. When working with a sandbox instance, an admin can switch the instance from sandbox to production or vice versa if needed as long as the organization pays the difference in cost between sandbox and production instances. For example, an organization with a default set of one production and one sandbox instance on their Dynamics 365 subscription cannot switch the sandbox instance to production because they would end up with two production instances which are not included on their subscription. Switches can be made on the Office 365 Admin Center in the same section where we can edit the properties of the instance. Sandbox instances can also be reset back to the default configuration, which can be useful when a solution is imported and changes are made over a period of time and the organization decides not to move forward with introducing a new solution to the users and to production. It is very easy to reset the instance and go back to the way things were before the solution was imported. 
Behind the scenes, what really happens is that the instance is deleted and a brand new one is created. This, of course, ensures that all of the data and the customizations and configuration are deleted as well. This process is also achieved through the Dynamics 365 Admin Center. In some cases, administrators might have the need to prevent non-admins from accessing an instance. For example, when testing an integration with other systems, such as an ERP system, on a user acceptance testing environment before users are allowed to test the new functionality and integration. This level of access is achieved by placing the sandbox instance into administration mode, which immediately restricts access to any user who is not a Dynamics 365 system administrator or system customizer. Depending on what functionality is being tested, background operations can be disabled to prevent workflows and other asynchronous operations from running on the instance. For example, imagine you need to introduce a new ISV solution into the production instance, and it will take you a few hours of configuration after the solution is imported into the system before it's ready for the users to work with it. You can communicate with users that the instance will be unavailable on a Friday afternoon, for example. And depending on the licenses available for the instance within that subscription, you could switch a production instance into sandbox, place it in administration mode, do the config work without having users accessing it and trying to execute tasks on the solution before it's completely configured, and then once the work has been done, turn administration mode off and switch the instance back to production to complete the procedure. Sandbox instances can also be deleted. Although it doesn't happen often since this essentially equals to the process of completely deleting a database. Typically organizations do this to free up a license for another instance. For example, an organization might delete a sandbox instance to allow a production instance to be switched momentarily to sandbox for a full copy from the UAT instance. We'll discuss copying in a second, but first let's talk about storage because it is an important point to be clear about when it comes to working with multiple instances. All of the storage available on a subscription is shared amongst all of the instances available within that subscription. For example, let's say that an organization has 50 gigs of storage available on their Dynamics 365 subscription, and their production instance is using 20 gigs of storage, with the development instance using 5 and UAT as an exact replica of production at 20 gigs of storage. This means that the organization would be using 45 gigs of their available 50. This also means that in this example, if the production instance was using 30 gigs instead of 20, the organization wouldn't be able to do a full copy of production into UAT. Copying an instance is the best way to ensure that the customizations and configuration and even all of the data is exactly the same between instances within a subscription. It is important to remember that this process is only available for sandbox environments, which means that you can copy either from a sandbox or a production environment, but the receiving instance always has to be a sandbox instance. A full copy includes all data, users, and customizations from one instance to another, which is an excellent way to create an exact replica to perform training outside of the production environment, for example, and also to test how the current customizations and configuration will behave after the upgrade. Remember though, that in order for a full copy to be completed, there has to be enough storage space available within the subscription. In the cases where an exact replica is not needed, for example, when developing new functionality, a minimal copy can be completed. A minimal copy only transfers users and customizations, but not the data. This is a perfect option to leverage for development environments. An admin can navigate to the admin center and select the source instance to be copied into another target instance. Once the action is started, the target instance is essentially deleted and replaced with a copy of the source instance. Once the process has been completed, the copy instance is placed in administration mode and background operations are disabled to prevent issues with integrations to external systems. In other words, let's say you take the production instance and select the development instance as a target for a minimal copy. At this point, the development instance will be deleted and a new instance will be created with an exact copy of everything from production except the data. The newly created development instance will not attempt to connect with the same systems the production instance is integrated with, preventing issues that could take a great deal of effort to fix. When working with subscription tenants and instances, it is important to consider that a tenant can include up to 50 production and 75 non-production instances each of those with its own SQL database, and each of those available to be accessed by all the licensed users. Each tenant is bound to a geographical region, 
which means that all of the instances added to a subscription within the tenant are created in the same region as the tenant. However, some organizations may have users geographically dispersed and request the ability to create one or more instances on a different region to be closer to those users accessing them. When this ability is granted, the organization will be able to select the region where the instance will be created. It is important to know that for organizations with instances in multiple regions, the combined storage from all of the instances is still calculated and applied to the total available storage for the subscription. Also, when an admin needs to manage an instance, the region must be selected first. The reason for this is that all of the administrative tasks we have discussed in this module are only possible between instances within the same region. For example, if an admin needs to perform a minimal or a full copy, both the source and the target instance must be within the same region. This is why typically when organizations choose to deploy instances closer to users located on a geographical location far away from the main region, at a minimum, a production and a sandbox instance is created within that region to support development and training within those alternate regions. Here are the current regions available to organizations looking to deploy instances on multiple regions. It is important for you to stay abreast with new regions added to the list. Microsoft is always looking to expand the regions available to Dynamics 365 customers. The regions you see on this list are the regions available at the time of the public release of Microsoft Dynamics 365 in November of 2016. Some organizations might have the need to use multiple tenants instead of multiple instances to cover different geographical or departmental needs. The main issue with this approach is that each instance is a separate account that must be managed separately. Nothing is shared between accounts or tenants, such as licenses, users, subscriptions, and integrations. Also, a tenant can only be federated with a single on-premises Active Directory, so providing access to users on each separate tenant can be a huge challenge. When it comes to solution architecture for organizations with users located in multiple regions, I always try to come up with solutions that leverage instances on a single region or multiple instances on different regions, and as a last resort, multiple tenants in different regions. As we mentioned before, when it comes to managing storage, each subscription has a storage limit that applies across all of the instances, regardless of whether they are a production instance or a sandbox instance or even the region where they're located. Notifications are sent to administrators when the limit is reached and also at a threshold, which is currently 80% of the storage limit. If the purchase limit is reached, new records cannot be created until data is removed or additional storage is purchased. However, this restriction might be removed in a future update. It is important to note that storage is always connected to a subscription and not an instance which means that adding an extra instance to an existing subscription does not add any extra storage to that subscription. You can see how much storage is being used in the web application by navigating to Settings, Administration, Resources and Used. There, you will see how much space is being used and the number of custom entities which is also limited. For a subscription with multiple instances, the Resources and Use page shows the storage used by each instance and the overall total. Note that storage used by any previous instance, as in this example, does not count towards the quota. Preview instances are uncommon for Dynamics 365 customers, as they're typically granted by Microsoft to partners so they can test new functionality before it's released to the public. The 80% storage consumption and limit reach are just some of the notifications received by Dynamics 365 system administrators. However, more recipients can be added at the instance level, which is really useful in cases where, for example, customers can add their partners to be notified as well as their internal system administrators. In the Dynamics 365 Admin Center, multiple recipients can be added to receive notifications on each instance. In summary, this module focuses on all of the details and management tasks that can be performed on Microsoft Dynamics 365 instances, such as copy, switch, and reset, as well as the considerations to keep in mind when working with multiple instances and tenants, including storage and administrative notifications.